After the Florida Supreme Court ordered district maps to be redrawn this spring, it was clear this year's election cycle was going to be a free-for-all. Nowhere is that more evident than in what today's Miami Herald is calling South Florida's most tumultuous Senate race, District 40. Florida Senator Dwight Bullard stopped by not only to defend his record, but also to share his vision for Florida. Been a teacher now for 17 years at Miami-Dade County Public Schools. Uh, teaching ultimately drove me to run for public office. I, I saw elected public service as an extension of teaching and uh, really just a grander opportunity to, to help uh, reach out to more people. More importantly, I saw how policies up in Tallahassee were affecting the classroom. Uh, and my record speaks for itself in terms of where my uh, focus has been. And my focus has always been centered around people, putting people first, uh, whether it's environmental causes, social justice causes, economic opportunity, economic development causes, it's really to try and move Florida forward. Uh, one bill that I'm absolutely uh, happy that I was able to pass was a bill that uh, dealt with cyberbullying. And it really uh, uh, put the term terminology that had not been in statute in the statute, uh, recognizing that we have a 21st century problem of uh, children being bullied online. We saw uh, during the Great Recession that education was going to be taking a substantial hit financially, and so uh, we thought it was responsible to put a uh, penny sales tax in place for a three-year period. Well, I've also pushed for the minimum wage increase as well. Uh, I've been pushing, you know, people talk about the 515. Uh, I've been right there at the forefront the last uh, few years because the reality is that you cannot afford to live uh, in Miami if you're making below a certain salary. Teacher salary is so critically uh, important. Uh, everyone will oftentimes criticize and say, well, you know, you get two months off uh, in the summer and you get all these vacation days. But the reality of, of it is that for individuals who have gone to college, uh, done well, and choose to become teachers, uh, the pay is substantially low, especially in states in the South and especially in Florida. So I was able to uh, propose a bill that would have uh, created basically an immediate rise to $50,000 a year for teachers. Staunch gun control advocate, primarily because I've represented communities where I've seen uh, guns uh, decimate uh, homes, decimate lives, decimate families. Should health care be a right or should it be a privilege? I'm of the belief that it should be a right. It should not be for the privileged few that are allowed to remain healthy or get healthy or get uh, the best kind of care. The Affordable Care Act, that is the law. And it has uh, benefited millions and millions of Americans and, and hundreds of thousands of Floridians. There's still hatred out there for the LGBTQ community. Um, and we see that in the form of legislation like, uh, you know, uh, restrictive bathroom legislation or people still trying to uh, deny benefits uh, to couples that are now uh, legally married uh, because they happen to be same sex. and. We can't allow that to continue. Where do we go forward? What, what do you see uh, a path forward for Florida? The reality is I'm very much an eternal optimist. I believe that if you put pragmatic, responsible people in positions of power um, who have courage, and, that, and that's something that's uh, oftentimes lacking in, in, in the current governmental structure, the ability to say, we have to do this because it's the right thing to do and not the political thing to do or not the thing that the majority of those of us sitting in these seats want, but it's the responsible and right thing to do, is so critically important. So when we think about things like the environment, we can fix the we can fix the algae bloom issue. You know, we can deal with climate change, we can deal with sea level rise if we put responsible people in place. You know, we can cut our incarceration rates down. We can, you know, build better schools and make better students if we are, again, responsible about our, our collective energy and our, and our desire to want to see Floridians do better. Um, and we have an opportunity to do so every time we vote. And I, I can't emphasize enough for those uh, folks out there that choose not to practice uh, voting. Uh, each and every time you get an opportunity to, what you're doing is conceding democracy. The Florida primary will be Tuesday, August 30th. You must be registered to vote before the August 1st deadline, and the early voting period is between August 20th and the 27th. This has been From the Desk of. I'm Enrique Baloira.